first of all, it was fear, you know, fear of uh, losing somebody, fear of somebody will be in need and fear of losing what we have built, fear of a couple of people quit uh, our business. They just went to do um, uh, Uber and DoorDash because it was hot. Focus on hitting your goals in every area of your business. Remember, the universe rewards the bold. A leader has to take the risks. So what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing great, doing great. Working, working. <laughs> working harder than ever, huh? Jeez. Yes. Just killing yes, it, yes. dude. Killing we are, it. We are. We are killing it right now. And, uh, trying to promote more regional vice presidents, trying to build a legacy, you know, how this wow. works. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, you you are like on fire right now, man. I mean, this is this is absolutely incredible what you're doing. I mean, I've never seen anything like this been done in 25 years that I've been in the business. Never seen anything like this being accomplished. And so uh, we're going to dive into that, man. Uh, I, I really want to get your mindset. I want to get so uh, we're, we are, um, I'm not even going to intro the show man i'm just everybody knows we're on wealth on the beach podcast but we're talking to carlos leon is that how how i say it leon is that is that leon leon correct okay and uh but you know i really want to dive in and figure out like how do you get to that mindset where you created so much so fast and and so if people are listening right now you got to hang with us this is probably going to be one of the best podcasts that we've had in 130 podcasts. Uh, this is probably going to be one of the best ones you've ever been a part of. So, cause I'm going to, I'm going to dive into every little piece of how he did what he did, uh, became a millionaire, probably, I think the fastest in the company's history. Uh, so be before I do that though, Carlos, um, I want to find out a little bit about where you came from. So tell us a little bit about your upbringing what were you like as a kid? Well, uh, I'm originally from uh, Colombia, South America. I came to US uh, when I was 21 years old and um, I studied computer, computer science. And I wanted to come to US uh, for one reason. And that reason was to have a better opportunity. You know, I have everything that I need to go by to, to make a living in, in, in Colombia. My dad was providing for me. Uh, we were very stable, but I was looking for something else. And I wanted to come to U.S. to have a break from my regular life at 21. You know, you have a lot of things on your mind. So I came to uh, just to visit. Uh, and then I fall in love with the, with the country. I fall in love with the system. I fall in, fall in love with I started working like I remember my cousin was working for BMW warehouse and uh, and he told me, hey, they needing people. Do you want to come and work for for one or two weeks? You make a couple of dollars. And I was like, sure. And I started working and I remember my paycheck was like two hundred and ninety dollars per week. And it was like two hundred and ninety dollars per week. This is a ton of money in my country. So I'm in. So I made the decision to stay in the United States. And um, as I was working in the BMW warehouse, I started like looking for something else. You know, I'm always being like a visionary. I'm always been looking for something great. I wanted to be a millionaire. And this is something that I love to talk. I love to talk about money and all this stuff because I always wanted it. I always wanted to have a lot of things and, and, and be We're good. Yeah. Uh, okay. be, be, before before you you finish your story, though, I do want to know what was it like being a child. I mean, how did you grow up? Did you grow up poor? Did you grow? I mean, like middle class, rich. I mean, what did your parents do as well? Well, I I, I was a middle class. I will say, uh, never never means a meal. Uh, my dad was working for a radio station. He was a salesperson for. He was selling. Um, marketing he was doing marketing with radio stations and tv stations and my mom she was a business owner she had a couple of uh, places 
um, she was selling like Christmas Christmas tr trees and she was selling uh, toys and Christmas and then she was selling jewelry and and she was an entrepreneur. We didn't have a lot of money. We we just was middle class. Um, I went to college. Uh, I went to a good school. Um, I, I have a couple of good jobs in Colombia as well. But like I say, um, I was always looking for something. I, I'm, I have a nine year old that he's always looking like when he look at my ring. And I think I was like that at that moment. He look at the ring and he say, dad, can you give me the diamonds from, from your ring? And I say, well, why do you want the diamonds from the ring? Well, I, I, I want to sell them. I'm going to get the money, a lot of money. I, I'm going to make an exact ring like you have. And I give you that back and I keep the change. And I was like, how do you come up with that idea? And then I was kind of like that, right? I wanted to sell my toys and, and be trading stuff and all the, the craziness. And, and I think that's what I remember the most. And, and my mom, all of my family from, from my mother's side, they work as independent business owners. So I grew in that environment. When I came to US, uh, uh, that I started working for these companies uh, and warehouse. And then I went to a kitchen to cook because they told me they pay better if you become a chef. So I was pursuing a chef career. Never wanted to study, but wanted to just be a chef because of my skills, you know? And then I found out that, uh, that if, if you get a commercial CDA license, uh, uh, you can drive trucks. And you get paid more. So I went and passed my CDL license and, and, and start driving dump trucks in New Jersey, come from New Jersey. And, and, and I always wanted to keep scaling, 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 scaling until I get to primary company. And so now you're in the BMW shop, right? <laughs> so you're working in the BMW shop. And so what, what was that like um, as far as now you're making like, Two hundred dollars a week, two two eighty a week, or something like that. Yeah. One hundred ninety dollars a week, and yeah. you're like, man, this is like unbelievable. It's America. You're yeah. an immigrant. You come over here, and it's like, because what 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 do they make? Like, if you would have had the same job back in your country, what would you have made? Like, how much more did you make? Would you say? Uh, I would say like fifty dollars a month, sixty dollars really? a month. Really? Yeah. So you're talking maybe, like 10 maybe times. a little more, maybe like a hundred dollars a month. I was making here like uh maybe a thousand, like twelve hundred. Yeah, I was making so you're talking 10 here. times. Yeah, about 10 times. Yeah. At that time. At that time, it was like 10 times. So it was it was like when I got my first check, I was like, oh my gosh, is this for real? I want to stay here. And it's a and big deal. It's a big deal. So I I, I just Call my brother and my mom, and I was like, "Man, I'm making it in America. I'm getting paid two hundred and ninety dollars per week. is is a lot more than I get paid a month in a week." So they were like, "Oh my gosh!" And then my brother, he was like, "Oh, I want to be there." And I was like, "Come over, come over." And then my brother came in and he started working with me um, in that warehouse. And so, so what what happened? What what was that? transition because you always had the mindset so like where was that transition where you were now recruited into the business how did how did you get recruited and well, when did you get recruited originally well, i got recruited originally back in 2006 i was living in new jersey i was driving dump trucks i was making like six thousand dollars a month which now we were talking about money right uh six thousand dollars a month and then I, I came to Georgia to visit a friend. And then, I, um, you know, Alex Sanabria, Alex and Claudia Sanabria, they were division leaders at that time. Uh, somebody, his brother gave me his card because I was like, I, when I came to Georgia, I saw all of the houses and I was like, oh my God, this is beautiful. Look at these houses. And in New Jersey, every, everything is super expensive and it's old. So when I saw new construction for $150,000, I was like, oh my God, I wanna come here. But not only come here, but start selling homes. What I have to do to sell homes? And they told me, you need to get a license. And I was like, oh, okay, how can I get a license? So I found Alice's brother, he, leased, he was listening to me. So he handed a, a business card from Alex and he said, hey, 
call my brother. He can help you um, getting the, the real estate license. And I, I call him immediately. He told me that, oh, sure, come over to my office. I, I'll give you an appointment tomorrow at 9 a.m. And I, I, I can teach you how to get a, a real estate license. So I, I went to his office and the first thing he told me, I remember, he told me, you know what, uh, nice to meet you. My name is Alex Sanabria. We don't do real estate license here, but we do something better. Let me show you. You should see my face. My face was like this guy. I mean, and then when he showed me everything, I fall in love with the concept. I told him, Alex, you know what? I love this. I see something special about this. I'm going to go back to Jersey. And in three weeks, I'm going to pack and I'm going to move to Georgia. I'm going to start working with you. And that's how everything happens. I went back to Georgia, came to, uh, I mean, to Jersey, came back to Georgia three weeks after, and I started working in Primerica. So that's how I got introduced into the business the first time. And so that first round, what happened? What challenges did you have that kind of made you to, you know, to, to get out of the business for a little while? What, what, yeah. what was that? What, what happened there? It was a little bit of everything. Uh, the first thing is uh, in Georgia, we have a temp license, right? And you can have a temp license after for 18 months. So first of all, I was licensed for 18 months. After that, I was out of business because I never went to take my license, my, my test. So I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for the commitment that, that the business required. I wasn't, I, I, wasn't full, I wasn't in love with the concept or, of becoming a millionaire of, of financial freedom. I love the good stuff, but I was not ready to be committed to it. I was 23 years old at that time. And I remember that I loved more party, partying than studying, right? Going out with the friends, going out with the agents at the office. Like it was crazy. We were going out every single day, not doing appointments. We were doing the opposite of what they asked for us to do. So I knew it was my fault. I knew that it, I, I took full responsibility of my, my fail the first time. And, and this is a funny story, Daniel. Um, I, I'm very afraid to prosper. You know, I'm a shy person. I, I cannot talk to someone in the street. I mean, that's my weakness point. Um, I cannot do it right now. If you want me to speak this to a stranger, I cannot do that. It would be like, it's frustrating for me. So, and, and I remember they told me, Carlos, we're going to help you out. Let's go prospect. That was back in 2007, right? Let's go prospect. And I say, but where? And they say, let's go Home Depot. Let's do a contest. We need to collect at least 10 names. And out of those 10 names, whoever do more appointments, we, we're going to get you to dinner. You're going to win a dinner, a special dinner with the leadership of the company. I was like, yeah, let's go. I was a player, I, I, I was a pretender. I was pretending that I was a player and we went to Home Depot and I was hiding on the restrooms because I was so afraid and everybody were prospecting and, and I was hiding in the restroom. The worst part about this is that I was faking the names. I was like Daniel Alonso, Carlos Leon, Marcena Avila, and John Smith. And, and, and when we got back to the office, I mean, this was, this was bad. We get back to the office and, and I was faking the calls, not only the names, but the calls, because I don't want to leave. I don't want to be left behind. You know, I want to be with the flow. Like everybody's making calls. I don't want to be like, oh, you're not doing the work. I was pretending I was, Hey, Daniel, I met you at Home Depot. Remember this morning you told me you like, it was bad. Man. You know what I mean? I'm embarrassed to say this, but I wanted to say that because it's, it might be a, a reality that a, a lot of people are facing right now. So um, I'm still afraid of prospecting, but I created a system that I don't have to prospect on the streets, that I don't have to go and look for strangers. So that was a huge part of, of the change. And I, um, we will talk a little bit about that uh, uh, later, but, but yeah, so I was not prospecting. I was faking those names. I was not recruiting. I didn't get licensed. So you can see what I failed. You know, I, I took the easy route and I quit. I have no option, but I needed money to eat. 
So I went out of Primerica, I went out of business in 2008, before 2009. So that, that's amazing, man. I mean, and I'm glad you shared that story because, yeah, a lot of people come on. I mean, not everybody comes in here, Mr. Personality. Not everybody comes in here with all the confidence in the world. Matter of fact, if we, if we were really honest, about 95% of the people come in the business with no confidence, with totally worried about speaking to people and scared to talk to people. And oh my God, I mean, looking back, I'm sure there's a lot of people that came into my business and they were scared to talk to people and Absolutely. they were scared to prospect and they lost. They didn't win because they were, because why? Because we didn't have another system to allow them to prospect without having to go see. So I'm glad you mentioned that. I want to dive into that. I mean, tell us like right now in your business, how do you prospect without having to go prospect? Well, um, I'm a big fan of um, when I heard, I study R. Williams numbers and R. Williams way. And I wrote the R. Williams way book and pushing out people before coming into the company back in 2018, right? So I heard about this warm market system and I wanted to know everything about warm market, but let me clarify first. I joined a company uh, after joining Primary Camp in 2018. I was part of a company that sells weight loss program. And I recruited it like 3,500 people in a year. It was insane. It was, we were recruiting people. Of course, we were using social media. It was products. People just click and buy. It was totally different. But I, I learned that uh, in order to grow a business, you need to recruit people. And, and I was a big recruiter, recruited people under people. So, um, but you know, before I get to that, uh, even though I recruit 3,500 people, I mean, this is something everybody has to know. 3,500 people in the other company gives me $8,000 a, a month. An organization of 3,500 active, active members eight thousand dollars a month that was crazy and and now i mean imagine an organization of 3500 people in from america i would give you what like eight million dollars a month and depending on where they are places but uh it was crazy so i use let me show you this i use the, the fast start planner and i fall in love with the concept of page number nine which is the steam so i start doing the steam um before doing the top 25 and it was a couple of reasons the first one was because i was afraid of prospecting so i was not willing to go prospect if i don't have to but but i was willing to do it even if i needed to if i needed to i was willing to go and prospect if we had social media and everything but i was willing to talk to strangers and everything in order to get at least one person that i can start using the system so lucky for me, or, or I would say, because he was what we were looking for, I recruited four people, four. And out of those four, we have recruited about almost 3,000 people in three years using this little Fast Start Planner. And how we use it, uh, we use the, the, the team first, and because I wanted to duplicate my agents first. So I was like, how can I, how can I get enough inventory that I don't have to go prospect anymore? And I found that if I get a recruit and I place three recruits under immediately, I will have enough inventory to work every day. And, and, and that was the deal that we made with my dad because my dad was the one who brought me back in business. I, I didn't want it to come back in business. I fought with my dad when he told me about America. That's another thing I have to tell you about it, but, uh, but yeah, so, and then and I, we recruit four people. I start building under my dad and I start building under another person who say, yes, so I, I built two legs and I start just recruiting and recruiting and recruiting people under people and more people and more people. So I'm always up to day. That's what I do all day. Recruit people under my people, create momentum under the team, creating little teams. You with him, you with him, you with him. You guys work together. Let's do this together. You go train him, you train. So it's like, it's, it's, it's magical. It's like moving, it's momentum maker. Is it, I don't know how to explain it, but uh, like I have more people that I can handle 
all the time. I have agents, new agents all the time because everybody fall into that. Like, oh, we need more recruits. And, and, and I was looking to, I know we have a couple of differences. A lot of people say we need to go wide, we need to go deep. I mean, everybody's right, everybody's right. But, but when, what we did was going deep on everybody and through digging in those recruits, we found the stocks. I never brought, never brought into the business a leader, never. I found it, I found them through digging in my recruits. So, and- And, 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 and I, do you notice, do you notice, and I found this out throughout all my years in business, I found out that most of the time you're gonna find your best people from the people Absolutely. that quit. Absolutely. So, the, <laughs> so, so I never worried about people quitting because when, as long as I went deep with those people, when they quit, all those people rolled up to me. I, I exactly. actually got wider. I got exactly. wider because those people quit. So, but the key point to what you just said right now is as soon as you get a recruit, you got to make sure you get three recruits underneath those, those recruits as yep. quickly as possible. So you're locking them in the business. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and in a couple of things, yes, they will not quit immediately because of the, the fear of losing something. What if that's the biggest question? What if they do something? So they don't want to quit yet. And, and what you say is very crucial. How do you get your personal recruits, Carlos? Do you do personals? Well, for me, my personal recruits are, if I get Daniel into my business and I recruit people under him immediately, those are my personal recruits because you're my, 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 my closest team. So if you left the business, I have three personals, but if you stay, you're the stud. You might be the one. So that's how we were looking at the business. That's how we look at the business. I say everybody needs their personals, but the personals are, Get three under your brand new recruit. Those are those are what we call personal. And, and you're right. We we have been we have gone very wide through building people under people. Like right now, I only built two legs, but I have twelve RVPs. I'm building my thirteen RVP. So it's 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 just a system that works, and, and it's about multiplication. Like like we all heard about it. You know, what's interesting to me, because I, I, again, I want to dive into this because I really think that what you just explained right now was explained to all of us, by the way. Okay. We all were like, that was nothing magical that was said right now, because again, it was the three, that get three, that get three, that get three, that get three. But what's magical. And what I really want to know from you is what was your work ethic like? Now, obviously right now you're earning a large sum of money and I know you're still working very hard, but tell us about, because to create what you created, to become a millionaire so fast in the business, you know, it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of work. So I want you to be as specific as you can explain to somebody out there, because again, Everybody thinks it's a get rich quick. Oh, you're going to get rich quick. Oh, this is going to happen for you overnight. And it's never happens fast enough. And even, even for the people that are saying, Hey, Carlos, you know, he's made a million dollars in the last couple of years. And that's awesome. And that's wonderful. You had a lot of experience of before course. you came. So it's different from a brand new person that starts today underneath you. They might not get there as fast as you because they don't have your experience, Correct. but the truth, but the, not that they can't, but the truth is you worked your tail off. So tell us what your daily schedule was like as you built this thing. Absolutely. And, and to clarify about this is it took me, it took me four, uh, 12 years, 12 years to become millionaire in less than three. So that's how it works guys. Uh, I was hustling like, I, I mean, I was doing everything and anything. And when I get back to Primerica, I was just ready. So how did this happen? I look at the uh, this, uh, R. Williams system and he was all about creating regional vice presidents, right? So I knew that if I want to create regional vice presidents fast, 
the first thing I have to do is create myself as a regional vice president fast. So I ask Alice and I say, Alex, what I have to do in order to become a regional vice president in four months? And he's, he kind of laughed. He was like, four months? And then this is funny, but you know, Sam Shepard, right? Who doesn't know the greatest Sam Shepard? He was walking in into the office and he looked at me and he was, Carlos, you're back. And I was like, yes, coach, I'm back. And I'm going to be an RVP in four months. His face was hilarious. He was like, you know what, Carlos? Go get you a license first before you're talking about regional vice president because he remembered it that I didn't even get licensed my first time. So he was like, you know what, Carlos? Go get yourself a license first. And then we talk about becoming a regional vice president. So I was like, coach, this, is, this time is different. So Alice told me, you know what? I don't know if that's possible, but if, if you can do at least 40 by 40, you can get fully licensed, get paid over 20,000, give me a good replacement leg. You, you, I don't see why not. And they were like, okay, on it. So I write it down. I write down. I was like, okay, 40 by 40. Okay. License. Okay. 20,000. Okay. A solid leg. But well, he told me three solid legs or uh, three solid legs. First thing I, I want to tell everybody in order to win, you need to have your goal, your specific goals, very clear. Where are you going? What you need to accomplish today for the week, for the month, and what you need to accomplish, what do you want in, in this business? So for me, I had a set goal that it was becoming an RBP in four months. And I told my wife and I told my kids and I told my dad and my mom, I need your help guys, because what I'm gonna do is gonna be insane, not only for me, but for us. I'm gonna study like crazy. You're gonna have a part-time dad that you need to understand this. And if you help me, you're gonna have a wealthy full-time dad then after. And everybody, everybody were like, okay, we, 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 we're on, let's, let's do it together. And, and in order for me to create a 40 by 40, I had a plan that uh, it's not easy to do a 40 by 40 base, right? But, but if we start and we break it down, a 10 by 10 is very doable. If you work ethic is the right work ethic and, and you're willing to be committed at this, anybody, a brand new agent, an, an old agent, whoever wants to do a 10 by 10 is doable in a month. So I got my four people and, and my goal was to start duplicating them. And, and I told my dad, dad, if we can get 10 people the first month, now we have some players. We should be able to duplicate that or at least to grow that a little bit more. What if from 10, we go to 20 the second month? And then from 20, we go to 30 the third month and to 40 the fourth month. That was the plan. And, and, and that's what I'm saying, uh, Daniel, uh, that, that if we have a plan, you can achieve it. But if you don't have anything, you just go to work because you want to make money it doesn't work like that. You might make $500, $1,000 in one week or in one day. Who knows? But you don't going to accomplish anything. So we start working. I did 11 recruits the first month. Through those 11, we grew to 32. And I understand because of the other companies, the importance of internal consumption. Internal consumption. So if I recruit someone the right way and they believe in what we do, at least, at least I'm going to do a business on you or you will take me to someone to close a deal. That's how I see the business. You, it's either you or you're going to take me to someone to close a deal. So that's what I call internal consumption. With you or through you, I'm going to close a deal. Basically, what's happening is every recruit that comes in there should be a sale attached Absolutely. to that recruit, Absolutely. whether it be them now. Now they might, you might recruit an 18 year old that he, maybe he's doesn't not going to buy, exactly. who doesn't need it or whatever, but we're going to go through that 18 year old to get his mom or his dad or his uncle or his aunt or somebody like that. So through, so everybody, so what, what a lot of, what I don't get is I see this a lot is somebody will recruit 30 people and they'll write 10 sales. What, why does that happen to, yeah. to, to RVPs out there, right? Yeah, I think, and I think because at the beginning, 
it is it's challenging to it's not perfect you know it's not perfect it's challenging but uh if you do your best it work it, it might be very even it's, it doesn't work all the times but when you build a couple of the leaders then your premiums start raising up so at the beginning you might have more recruits create a couple of leaders that start helping you and if they duplicate that your premium will start raising up our premium were very even like we did 11 by 12,000, 32 by 32,000, 35 by 35,000 on the third month. It was very even because we had the culture. That's what we were selling to others. That's when, when somebody joined, that's what they knew about the business. So how we do it? Well, this is the way we do it. And everybody were doing it like that. So, and, and since we have this crazy goal about becoming an RVP, everybody was sold to that goal and everybody was working towards that goal. I told him, guys, if, it, if, if you help me out to get this done, we're gonna make history in the company. And when we make history, you guys will be part of it and you guys will be next. And, and, and then we're gonna make $100,000 and then you make $100,000 and through helping a lot of people to make $100,000, we're gonna do two, three, four, 500,000. So we're gonna help a ton of people but start by you. Do you really want it bad enough? So we saw the dream. We, we, we were not doing a lot of trainings about closing deals because um, I wanted to build, I wanted to have a stability, people that I can go places. I want, when I get to my office, two to three people waiting for me. That's what I wanted to create. So, and then we did it through that. So internal consumption is very important in this business because like Art Williams say, you work in a warm market system and you can go through the end of the world through the warm market system. You don't need anything else. I say to people, don't look outside where you already have inside. And, 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 and when you have a ton of recruits and, and, and little premium, it's because you're, you're just mastering your recruiting, but you're not mastering the other part of the system. And then we try to do it together and it works, it works. Our numbers always are like very close ones to the other because we're not trying to close as many premium as we can. We're not trying to do as many recruits as we can. I can go ahead and get me 200 recruits if I wanted to. I do a really good marketing campaign. I, I start doing a lot of interviews. I will recruit the world, but I will kill the world as well if I don't do something with them. So for us, it was more important getting someone in, 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 and I call this, this, this is the example I do. A lot of people are asking for people to stick to us. Why they don't stick to me? My question to you is why you don't stick to your people? Why you don't do what you're supposed to do as a leader? Get someone to get you the list, to call their warm market, to go to appointments, to recruit some more people and to close some deals get them licensed and get them promoted. Why you as a leader don't stick to someone? Why are you looking for 10 when you already have one here that you should be looking for 10 under this new people, this person? And that's how we, is, is, I think that's the secret right there for us that is being working for us. Every single recruit and every single premium we do is with the purpose of promoting someone because we're not here to sell. We're here to create the biggest RBP factory that, that, that for America has ever seen. And why? Because that's how we get wealthy. That's how everybody will get paid. That's how everybody will accomplish their dream. So that's, that was the dream. And what I'm telling you, I was talking it to people since the beginning, since my first month in business. That's, that was my conversations to new people. And, and so, I mean, just, just, this is just powerful stuff, man. Um, okay. So COVID hits, right? You're in the middle of the greatest run ever slam down. You can't go to your office. What's going through your mind and how did you pivot? How did you, you know, stay on track, even though the world was trying to get you off track? Well, first of all, it was fear, you know, fear of, 
uh, losing somebody, fear of somebody will be in need and fear of losing what we have built, fear of a couple of people quit uh, of our business. They just went to do um, uh, Uber and DoorDash because it was hot. Oh, nobody wants to, uh, I mean, they're closing the doors. We cannot go back to the office. Luckily in Georgia, we didn't, we didn't have that much pressure we had the office open all the time, right? We have all of the security, the safety uh, um, measures, and we had the, the, the face cover, and we have a lot of hand sanitizer, and we were sanitizing the office every week, and, and, but we never stopped. We never stopped doing business. And I told my people, you know, let me show you this, um, Daniel. Uh, this, do you remember this? This is the run for the Ruby, uh, and in Atlanta convention, last convention we had, they told us to write this, the goals. And I wrote, create nine RVPs, become a better leader in 2020, by 2021 convention, and cross over $500,000 in income. My goal was to build nine RVPs. So I told my people, you know what, guys, this is a crucial moment. And I want to see who is a player. I'm going to start my run of promoting nine RVP. So I wanted to create a bigger vision. I wanted, I want them to forget about COVID because if they focus on COVID, nobody will work. So I say, I'm going to start creating my nine RVPs and whoever get licensed, let's take this moment for us to take advantage and let's study. And I start doing a class of SIE. I never took the SIE because I passed my sixth straight. We didn't have that program yet. But I did a class on how to pass the SIE. I, I, I'm not a teacher on, on classes, but I want to show them the commitment that I had to work side by side with them to help them become a regional vice president. So a lot of people, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people start, just give me one second. Here. A lot of people start like, okay, so what are we going to do? I say, we're going to start using Zoom. We're going to start doing digital marketing. We're gonna bring, we're gonna do exactly the same. Exactly the same. We're gonna do internal consumption, but let's do it through Zoom. So we switched to Zoom, yes, but we were, we had a lot of people at the office as well. We never stopped. When we did that class, the, the investment class, I had 16 people, right? And I say, whoever come to my class and pass the test will be an RVP. So everybody was like fighting to get to that class. And five of those quit at the, at the first class. They quit. <laughs> they, they couldn't handle because the class was at 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. So it was about um, five, six hours in class. And then they were like, okay, this is too hard. They quit. At the end of the class, it was two weeks on that class. Six of those people become fully licensed. Six. Because they, they saw the commitment on the team. And they, they got power, they got extra powers and we started doing a run for RVP. I remember uh, my first RVP promotion in 2020, we got a lady and my guy quit, you know, my guy quit. My highest income earner right now, he quits on May. He was a regional leader, he quits. He said, Carlos, I can handle this. I need to go do DoorDash and Uber. I say, bro, if you left the office, if you go over there, this is the last time I'm gonna call you because you, you deserve, if you want to quit right now, you deserve to go and drive for Uber, man. Because I'm giving you my all. I'm going to give you 90 days. I'm going to work with you for 90 days until you become a regional vice president. You just need one more license, the 63. Go get it done this week, and I'm going to recruit like crazy with you. And that's how it happened. That was in May 4th. May 11, he got the 63. And, and within that week, we recruited a lady, and she brought 25 people. 25 new recruits through digging in there. And we closed his month from zero to zero. We closed 47 to 43, 47 recruits to 43,000 in premium. He become an RVP. And, and since then he learned the discipline of the business. He was working with me from, from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. So most of the people think that this is just let me show up to the office and, and it's supposed to happen. No, it doesn't work like that. At least when you're building, you need to put at least 10 hours on your business, at least building, recruiting someone, 
doing orientation on someone, doing the lease on someone, calling your people, call, making appointments, teaching others. That's, that was my discipline on working. And then after I studied for, when I started, then I was doing 10 hours of straight work and I was studying for four, five, six, seven hours a day. I was barely, barely sleeping for four hours. I look like a zombie, you know, people come, are you okay, Carlos? I must, I'm better than, than before. I'm, I'm about to get my licenses, guy. I'm gonna show you how to get it done. And, and that's, and now we're here. So, so digital marketing, what, is that, what does that mean for everybody that's, that's listening? How, how did you implement that and, and what did you do in that area? Well, we had the, we start using the, the, the video, the lift video, flick, lift, flick, the, yeah. the video. L the, the, LFIC, the LFIC. LFIC. Uh, we bought that video. We wanted to start using it, but since we were so strong on, on building, digging in people, we didn't, we didn't start using it immediately. We, we just keep digging in people. A lot of people start doing posts, offering jobs. Hey, we open in another office. They start recording themselves. Hey, hey, if you're looking for a new career in this pandemic, call me, I, I can help you. Simple things, it's very simple things. They were posting it. They were sending that to their friends. So we were being in marketing, we were being more aggressive, not with doing campaigns, but targeting our own family members. Hey, if you're listening to me, I'm here to help you in this. Send messages to everybody who say not before. You say no before. I don't know if, if this is COVID, right? Everybody get out of work. Did, did everybody call everybody who say not before? Did you call of those thousands of people that say not to you before? Well, now is a new situation. Now is a do it or die. Are you out of work? Do you need an opportunity? So we start targeting, like you say, people who were out of business, people who were in Primerica before and now they needed it for real. And that's how we start growing like crazy. We start recruiting a lot of people. A lot of people get more committed because they had more time. They, they, they went out of work. So, but we were not huge in marketing. Uh, I teach my people if, if and, and I might be wrong, but I don't wanna change anything because it's working. I told my people, if you're doing marketing, is with the purpose of getting someone into the system. Once you have the system, grow with it. Because that's what it's going to take. First of all, our business is a relationship business. How can you create a relationship without sticking to someone? You're looking for so many. Yes, you might, if you get 100, 200, 300 from, from the internet, you might have an explosion. But, but I don't see how can you convert that into their business? Yes, you will, because there's a lot of people, large numbers, you know, that works. But for me, it works better if everybody stick to someone. I stick to you, Alonso, and I want to take you to the top. I don't going to let you go until you become a regional leader, until you get your license, because I'm in the business of producing RVPs, not recruiting the work. It would be great if I have 500 recruits, but for me, it's better to promote a regional vice president this month. What I have to do to promote Alonso to regional vice president. So we promote in a RBP since May, we're being promoting RBPs every month. Sometimes- and what, What's your guidelines? What, what's your guidelines? 20 by 20 each month, at least two months on the road. So a total of 40 by 40, fully licensed, over 20,000 in, in, in income and and one leg. And so, and that leg, what's that one leg usually got to do for you? Like how, how much production will that one leg be doing? I don't look for production. I look for commitment. I look for someone who is willing to get licensed because I know how to do production. I know that I can- Willing, willing to get securities license, security right? Licenses, securities yes. license, right? If it's not, if it's not. Right. Right. So I'm always looking for someone who is security licensed if it's not at least that they can go ahead and do it. Someone that I see in the business that they're committed, that at least they're willing to go train someone if they're not training someone yet. And, and that's what I'm looking, qualities, qualities and that you can become. 
because if I wait, and I found this Alonso uh, early in business, if I wait and I heard our William say, I want you to error promoting RBPs too fast than to error holding down people. So I, I want to die with that concept. I'm not going to go below the guidelines, but I don't want to put more guidelines into it. We already have enough. I know 20 by 20 are double of the guidelines. I know that. And I'm, I'm, I might not agree, but that's what my heart is saying. I'm doing it because I, I love my heart. I love my coaches and I respect them. We go by the guidelines, right? But I would want it to be easier. For if I'm the if I'm our Williams right now, I would do I will sign something for the company to cut it down a little bit because that was not the guidelines back then. Somebody else tweaked the system. When just think about this, I was I was talking to Art and and, and he said we created twelve thousand RBPs in thirty years, twelve thousand. Why cannot we create 12,000? If that's the name of the game, somebody or the message got lost in, in the way. I don't know where, but when he said 12,000, I'm like, in 13 years? Hey, we need to get back to that. That way, a lot of people will be financially free. I'm not talking about making $100,000 a month. I'm talking about it, most of the people will be financial free with $20,000, $30,000 a month in overrides. That's what I'm looking for, my people. That was my promise to my people. That was my promise to my family. I never thought about the million. I don't feel a millionaire. Yes, I have the money in the bank. <laughs> don't get me wrong, but... I don't feel like a millionaire yet. I, I, we're just working. We're getting paid. Thanks God, a lot of money. But I wanted a lot of people to make a lot of money. That's that's why I think the team is growing and the RBPs are growing. So I'm helping my team. Right now, we have a goal. We, we promote 12 RBPs and we have a goal for 2021, promoting 27 RBPs. New RBPs, 27 new. So I told to my guys, okay, everybody needs to promote at least three. We're talking about multiplication. That's what we're going to do. If we all do three, we're going to be like 40. Because we're like 13 RBPs now. We're going to be close to 40. But let's let's go by 27. That would be a good goal. If we do more, that's great. So right now, we have a, a, a elite group. The only thing they're thinking about is getting promoted to RBP. I love it. I love it. I, I wrote that down. 